Hi everyone. Today I will be presenting my summer research where I explored the innate preference for flower shape and the hawk moth Manduca sexta. And so the first thing I want to do is present the organism I've been working with throughout the summer. And so Manduca sexta is a large nocturnal pollinator whose unusual flight and size, similar to that of a hummingbird, allow it to be a model organism in the study of behavior, plant pollinator interactions, and flight control and energetics. And so pollinators are an essential part of ecological and agricultural systems. Many flowering plants depend on the contribution of animals, such as butterflies, bees, hummingbirds, bats, and even lizards for pollination. And in return, these animals receive important resources such as nectar. And Manduca sexta, having a 10 centimeter long proboscis, occupies an important niche and is responsible in part for the pollination of night blooming flowers. And so going more into details of what's a proboscis and the life cycle of this hawk moth, well, I would like to clarify that this proboscis is the only feeding mechanism of an adult hawk moth. And so it can only acquire food in liquid forms, such as nectar. And so this nectar provides the hawk moth with the necessary energy to um, fly and find an appropriate host plant to lay its eggs. And these eggs then hatch, and the larvas then proceed to eat the flower they were hatched on in order to acquire the nutrients necessary for the next stage, which is the, the pupal stage. Now, in this stage, the larva undergoes important changes and enters metamorphosis. This is where the, the larva completely rearranges it itself in order to become an adult hawk moth. And when this is ready, the hawk moth will then emerge from this case and proceed to find a flower. But how can an inexperienced moth find a flower? Its previous life was just about eating leaves, and now it must acquire nectar. And so researchers have found that at large distances, hawk moths use olfactory cues in order to orient themselves towards the flower. At intermediate distances, an approach is then guided by visual and olfactory cues. And for the final stage, in order to establish and maintain a proboscis contact in hopes of successfully empty, emptying a nectary, a moth must receive the, the appropriate visual, olfactory, and gustatory cues. And now I'm interested in these two steps right here. The approach where a moth decides what could be a possible source of food and the proboscis contact where a moth has decided that the object in front of it is a food source. And so I was really interested in how does a moth choose an individual flower, or more specifically, how does floral shape affect the innate flower choice and handling in the hog moth Manduca sexta. And I've underlined two key terms, which will be crucial for the understanding of my experimental data. The first one is flower choice. This is an innate response and will be measured by first approach and first proboscis contact. The second one is flower handling. And this is defined as the ability to find and to drink from a nectary. And this will be measured by the total amounts of success and visits to a flower. And so to address this question, my lab and I designed an experiment. And so we chose these three flower shapes. Una Thea Fueva, which has four heart-shaped petals. Nicotiana alata, that has the shape of a star. And Ipomia alba, that has five round-shaped petals. And now, I must clarify that Manduca sexta is known to pollinate these flowers in nature. But my question really is about whether if any of these three flower shapes comes closer to the image of a flower in the nervous system of an inexperienced moth. And so we then constructed artificial flower models 
each standardized for surface area, since it's known to affect flower handling efficiency, and rewarded each flower with 40 microliters of a 20% sucrose solution, and presented them in this mixed floral array. Now, we chose this mixed floral array because it would allow us to determine the moth ability to discriminate and choose between the different shapes if it is actually doing this. And so to perform our behavioral assays, we used three to four day old mohawk moth inexperienced that were kept unfed and unmated. Our experimental arena consisted of a one meter cubed flight cage with a light intensity of two lux, allowing us to mimic dim moonlight conditions. Relative humidity was kept at 50% and the air inside the cage was saturated in bergamot oil volatiles known to in induce feeding behavior in the moth. And so what I have here is a short clip of a male moth foraging upon the mixed flower array. And this is just to give you a better idea of how these experiments were performed. And within the first seconds, you will see the moth approach this flower right here that has four heart-shaped petals. Then it will approach the same flower shape again in the second row, but then actually choose the flower in the back with five round petals as a food source. Now we're playing the video. And you can see the moth has approached here and then approached the same shape again, even extending proboscis, but then it will finally choose this flower to establish proboscis contact and to attempt feeding. And so we flew a total of 117 moths. Um, unfortunately, less than half of these responded to the treatment. And so this total response is then divided into three different response variables, the approach, the proboscis contact, and the success. Now, in these columns, I have the moth that only made, um, only made it this far in the foraging process. And so we, we have 10 females and two males that only establish an approach. Then we have seven females and five males that in addition to the approach establish proboscis contact. And then finally we have only eight females and 15 males that could actually drink from the nectaries. And so these numbers don't allow us to, estab to establish a statistical analysis, but we do see some trends, and that is what I will be talking about in the next slides. And so to address the first part of our question, which was flower choice and innate preference for shape, we would take a look at first approach and first proboscis contact. Now, I have a graph for each of these response variables. And I have divided these graphs by sections of females and males. Each bar represents a specific flower shape. And so the blue bars represent Ipomea alba, the green bars represent Nicotiana alata, and then the yellow bars represent Eunothera flava. And so when you take a look at first approach, you see that males and females seem to prefer Eunothera flava. But when you take a closer look at first proboscis contact, you may see that females seem to prefer Onothera flava, but males seem to prefer Ipomea alba. And to address the second part of my question, which was flower handling, these are results after a successful flower visit. We would take a look at the amounts of success and the total amounts of visits towards each flower, each flower shape. And so we can see that neither males nor females showed any preference towards shape. It's almost constant. And what's interesting about these results is that when you compare first approach and first proboscis contact, where you can see a clear bias for shape, to success and visits, where there's no bias for shape, you get a clear image of innate versus experienced decision decisions. And so in other words, what this means is that 
we get an insight into the moth innate preferences and how these preferences after a successful visit change to the point where it completely disappears. And so to summarize my presentation, we have gained insights into the moth innate preferences where males seem to prefer Ipomea alba, which has five round shaped petals, and females seem to prefer Onothera flava, which has four heart shaped petals. We, we have also gained information into how the moth can learn and improve foraging behavior. And so what is next for my project? So if I had more time, I would first achieve a, an appropriate sample size to establish a clear preference if there is any. And if there is, I would like to continue research with experiments where I manipulate floral dimension and floral size because not all flowers are the same in nature. And I would like to see how this difference would then change or affect the initial flower choice. And if it turns out there is no clear preference, I would like to use this data and continue my research with learning experiments where I would train a moth to associate a specific shape with a reward and then test the moth ability to find this shape or to identify this shape amongst a mixed floral array. And either way, both of these projects have a focus on the moth innate preferences, how the moth can learn and improve foraging behavior, and how this behavior has helped shape some of the world's most ostentatious night blooming flowers through pollinator mediated natural selection. And before concluding my presentation, I would like to give a special thanks to the National Science Foundation, the USDA, and the Boyce Thompson Institute for the funding and for hosting me, to George and to Delaney for organizing this event, and a special thanks to my mentor, Robert Raguso, my PI, Robert Raguso, and my mentor, Jinkia Tahake, for the guidance provided throughout the whole research, and to my home university, the University of Puerto Rico, for preparing me for these types of situations. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we did see this in some moth, but there wasn't enough data to establish um, is, as a result. But I did see some of the moth actually, after having a successful visit, go to the same flower shape, even though it was on the other side of the floral array. Yeah? Okay, so for a flower approach, I, the moth, since it flies similar to a hummingbird, you can actually see the moth reduce the velocity, approximate the flower, and really go around it, and that's what I defined as an approach. Any other questions? Um, I don't have a specific reason why, but some of those were maybe, um, did not go through the process of becoming a moth efficiently. Some of those may have damaged wings. Um, others just may have been too hungry or, or stuff like that. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. So, um, is there any inherent difference in the quality of these flowers out in nature? Should they be you know, preferring one or the other? I don't know specifically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you, Benjamin. Okay, thank you.